very much. Uh, let's dive into uh, it's a Tuesday. It's following a college football weekend, and so let's get into some uh, ratings talk uh, and see kind of what's what when it comes to some of the most watched games from this past weekend. And hey, if you've got Colorado fatigue, that's just too dang bad. And uh, so, so long as they keep winning, then you know what? You're going to have to find maybe another sport to follow because Colorado fever is uh, at a fever pitch, and that was evident this past weekend. Their game against Colorado State topping 9 million viewers uh, this past Saturday night, averaging uh, 9.3 million on ESPN, the largest late-night college football audience on record, fifth-largest regular season audience ever on ESPN's family of networks at one point. Uh, in double overtime, as the, or the, as the game went double overtime, at one point, the peak hit 11.1 million viewers uh, for this contest. So an average of 9.3, a high of 11.1. And that 11.1 came between Central Time, 10 and 10.15 p.m., because obviously there was a late-night game. So you had 11 million-plus people at... 10:15 Central Time, or that window 10 to 10:15, uh, watching that Colorado Colorado State game, largest college football uh, audience of the entire year through the first three weeks. I say entire through the first three weeks, and uh, it tops what was the previous high, FSU LSU, uh, the Labor Day Sunday night main event of the Standalone opening game, weekend. Yeah. What? The standalone game in primetime. Yes, the standalone Labor Day weekend contest that had 9.17 million people, uh, 2 million more for Dion uh, and the Buffaloes versus Colorado State. So uh, the ratings are just getting bigger and stronger. And, you know, as they keep winning, I'd imagine that would continue to be the case. But they now have three of the five most watched games this season. They hit 8.73 million against Nebraska, 7.26 million versus TCU, and now this monster number of nine plus million. So, I mean, you know. Um, you might not like it, but you better learn to love it <laughs> because it's not going anywhere unless, you know, some massive losing streak were to occur. But right now, the buffs are must-see TV. I, uh, I I told you the story Monday that I was watching it, big, huge TV that I have in the bedroom, and I, I kind of fell asleep about mid-third quarter, woke up just in time for all the craziness. I actually saw people who are saying that the numbers were a little bit inflated because – a lot of people were watching the game and they fell asleep but left the TV on. Stop. Stop looking for re they had an incredible audience. Unbelievable okay. numbers so in a that game that started at nine o'clock central time. Okay. So that means they turned it on in the first place to fall asleep yes. to it. Okay. That's what matters. It doesn't look when you, the Nielsen like the Nielsen ratings that come in, they don't send you a quiz that also says, hey, with the uh, 435 in the, on the clock in the third quarter. Uh, name three jersey numbers that were out in the field. They don't do that. It's just that it's on. So, again, they turned it on in the first place, and that's where it was. So the negativity can can go away on that one. That's yeah, impressive. It's, I, do, I find it funny. George Klyovkov was almost right on his Dion take in that Dion was going to help Television, yes, he's going to help the television ratings, but you can't sign a five-year contract basing on a coach who you don't know who he's where he's going to be, and that's any coach. Like I, you know, I don't, I don't Just know. Just another reason why they should have found a way. Look, the Pac-12. Kirk, Kirk Ferentz and Mike Gundy have been at their places for as long as they want, but if they quit, you know, year one into a TV contract, it doesn't help that TV contract long term. You can't base on that, but yes, it does. It is very strange that he is affecting it that much. All right, so, uh, I mean, that's if, for if the folks are, I think probably most people are joking about leaving the TV on. If they're not, though, they're just world class haters, which, you know, that's, uh, I guess you could take that. Some people might take that as a compliment, but um, yeah, I mean, at this point, you're just, you're just, uh, I guess looking for a reason to to try and, and knock what's going on, but uh, like them or, or not, uh, they are They're must see TV yeah. uh, every single weekend of college football so far uh, to this point, and that's only going to grow uh, with even bigger matchups heading their way now in conference play. But uh, that was obviously a, a massive number, and as I mentioned, it was the fifth highest audience ever on ESPN for a college football game, uh, the top ever just for a trip down memory lane, Auburn, Alabama. 
crossed 13 and a half million viewers. That was the most watched college football game ever on ESPN back in 2014. Um, you also had Ohio State and USC in 09 uh, get 10 and a half plus million. Ohio State Vatech in 15 got 10 and a half plus million. Boise State Virginia Tech in 2010 got 9.89 million. And then you had this game right here, 2023. So even the next closest was eight years ago to the largest audience that uh, they've had. So, yeah, just massive, massive numbers for the Colorado Buffaloes. And, um, yeah, there is something to Dion being a ratings draw. So that was clearly the top game of the week. But I always just, just throw a, you know, a few more games out there. The second most watched game of the weekend was South Carolina and Georgia. Uh, that was a, uh, let's see here, 5.4 million viewers for South Carolina at Georgia. Also had Tennessee, Florida reeled in 5.3 million viewers. That was good enough for the number three spot. Alabama, South Florida, which I'm sure there was a few people that jumped onto that game that weren't necessarily watching, you know, right away necessarily, but 4.836 million viewers. And then Florida State, Boston College round out uh, the top five most watched games uh, with 3.4 plus million viewers. So in other words, the number one ranked two-time defending champions on a 20-something game winning streak against another SEC team had half the audience yep. of mm -hmm. Colorado who kicked off at 9 o'clock our time, 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, that's impressive. How powerful are they? Their game coming up Saturday against Oregon? Or no, it's the USC game will be another one of those 10 a.m. mountain time kicks because everybody wants them on their network. At everybody. 9 a.m. Pacific. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. Yeah. That is wild. But, uh, no, it's Colorado, Oregon coming up this weekend, and then USC is the weekend after. But, yeah, they've basically become the official mascot for Big Noon Kickoff at this point. Um, every single weekend uh, they've been a fixture, um, and I imagine that's all going to continue. So, yeah, I mean, if not for that Colorado-Colorado State game, uh, you would have had – you know, the two SEC games, South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee, Florida, is easily the two most watched with five million plus uh, for each of those. But you combine those, and it's just like a million more than the Colorado-Colorado State game got, uh, which is pretty uh, incredible stuff there. Uh, also had a, a healthy rating for the Backyard Brawl, uh, 2.4 plus million viewers uh, for that one as well. So I just want to throw in that because that was a big deal for uh, West Virginia and um, yeah, just cool to see uh, how some of these games are, are popping on the charts and uh, what kind of audience is, is being brought in. And uh, just, man, if, imagine if they beat Oregon. <laughs> imagine if they beat Southern yeah, Cal. The with defending, that's gonna... Yeah, the returning Heisman winner, USC Glitz and Glamour uh, in the top five. It's going to continue, yeah. And, then, and uh, Shador Sanders, if they were to beat Oregon, and even if they don't, is a part of that conversation. It will be nuts in Boulder if that happens, if they win I, in Eugene. I, I just wonder what – I mean, Might be nuts anyway. How do you compare, an, like, just for the Pacific time zone, a 9 a.m., like, what the 9 a.m. rating will be for Caleb Williams versus the Sanders crew? Hmm. Uh, because most of the time, I would think 9 a.m. and Saturday is not where you're – they're walking their their dope they're walking their uh, dogs Dobermans are big huge whatever uh, just you know around the mansion half the people especially the people watching the game haven't even had their first cup of coffee yet yeah. and they're gonna be tuned in watching this thing that's gonna be crazy to see that Fox which is in L A by the way and running to L A is doubling down so hard on Dion that they took a game which was theirs and instead of putting it at a primetime slot took it for the the noon slot. And they're betting that where most of the fans are for that game, which would be Southern California normally, are going to wake up and watch it. Yeah, the Colorado's yeah, yeah. a national draw, and USC yeah. brings that too with Caleb. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's going to be fascinating to see, you know, how long this Colorado run lasts. You know, just as far as because there's already all the talk about what's he going to do, how long is he going to be there, and this and that. I don't like this is a debate for another time, but I don't think that I, I think he needs to be at a place that's not. Alabama or not like a blue blood that's already got this massive like I think he thrives better on a place where there is so much more upside but that can be a conversation for another day because I think he loses some of like he'd still be Dion at Alabama but Alabama's also Alabama he's, at Colorado it's Dion like it's all about Dion he's and, also set out to prove something yeah. because remember what Dan Lanning said during the offseason realignment about Colorado yeah <laughs> that might be the thing but then they left 10 days later so it may look pretty stupid uh, but I I think I agree with you, Craig, and I think part of the reason he, he picked a place like Colorado and why he says USF was really in the mix is he's trying to prove something. Yeah, sure. Because he, he didn't want – he knew what people would say about him. He wanted to prove, okay, you know what I want to do? 1-11, book it. 
Yep. Yeah. I'll make you care. So elsewhere, uh, did you want 